Welcome evening prayer. Please join me in the first verse of hymn 338. The God of Abraham praise, who reigns enthroned above, ancient of everlasting days, and God of love. To him uplift your voice, at whose supreme command, from earth we rise and seek the joys at his right hand. The order of evening prayer daily throughout the year is found beginning on page 17 of the Book of Common Prayer. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart of God thou wilt not despise. Dearly, beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that ye should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lonely, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, it ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, under the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do with this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall shout forth thy praise. O oh, God, make speed to save us. O oh, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for without and amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
course of the Psalter appointed for the evening prayer of the tenth day, begins with Psalm 53, found on page 428 of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll say the Psalms in unison. The foolish body hath said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they, and become abominable in their wickedness. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men, to see if there were any that would understand and seek after God. But they are all gone out of the way. They are altogether become abominable. There is also none that doeth good, no, not one. Are not they without understanding that work wickedness, eating up my people as if they would eat bread? They have not called upon God. They were afraid where no fear was. For God hath broken the bones of him that besieged thee. Thou hast put them to confusion, because God hath despised them. O oh, that the salvation were given unto Israel out of Sion! O oh, that the Lord would deliver his people out of captivity! Then should Jacob rejoice, and Israel should be right glad. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Save me, O God, for thy name's sake, and avenge me in thy strength. Hear my prayer, O God, and hearken unto the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and tyrants which have not God before their eyes seek after my soul. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Destroy thou them in thy truth. An offering of a free heart will I give thee, and praise thy name, O Lord because it is so comfortable. For he hath delivered me out of all my trouble, and mine eye hath seen his desire upon mine enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hear my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my petition. Take heed unto me, and hear me. How I mourn in my prayer, and am vexed. The enemy crieth so, and the ungodly cometh on so fast. For they are minded to do me some mischief, so maliciously are they set against me. My heart is disquieted within me, and the fear of death is fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and an horrible dread hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I flee away and be at rest. Lo, then would I get me away far off, and remain in the wilderness. I would make haste to escape, because of the stormy wind and tempest. Destroy their tongues, O Lord, and divide them. For I have spied unrighteousness and strife in the city. Day and night they go about within the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is therein. Deceit and guile go not out of their streets. For it is not an open enemy that hath done me this dishonor, for then I could have borne it. Neither was it mine adversary that did magnify himself against me, for then peradventure I would have hid myself from him. But it was even thou my companion, my guide and mine own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together, and walked in the house of God as friends. Let death come hastily upon them, and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and then the Lord shall save me. In the evening and morning and at noonday will I pray, and that instantly, and he shall hear my voice. It is he that hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. Yea, even God that endureth forever shall hear me and bring them down, for they will not turn nor fear God. He laid his hands upon such as be at peace with him, and he brake his covenant. The words of his mouth were softer than butter, having war in his heart. His words were smoother than oil, and yet be they very swords. O oh, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall nourish thee and shall not suffer the righteous to fall forever. 
And as for them, thou, O God, shalt bring them into the pit of destruction. The bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Nevertheless, my trust shall be in thee, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here we begin at the twelfth chapter of the book of Judith, a reading from the Apocrypha. That he commanded to bring her in where his pate was set, and bade that they should prepare for her of his own meats, and that she should drink of his own wine. And Judith said, I will not eat thereof, lest there be an offerance, but provision shall be made for me of the things that I have brought. Then Holofernes said unto her, In thy provision should fail, how should we give thee the like? For there be none with us of thy nation. Then said Judith unto him, As thy soul liveth, my lord, thine handmaid shall not spend those things that I have, be for the Lord work by mine hand the things that he hath determined. Then the servants of Holofernes brought her into the tent, and she slept till midnight, and she arose when it was toward the morning watch, and sent to Holofernes, saying, Let my Lord now command that thine handmaid may go forth unto prayer. Then Holofernes commanded his God that they should not stay her. Thus she abode in the camp three days, and went out in the night into the valley of Bethulia, and washed herself in a fountain of water by the camp. And when she came out, she besought the Lord God of Israel to direct her way to the raising up of the children of her people. So she came in clean, and remained in the tent, until she did eat her meat at evening. And in the fourth day, Father Fernes made a feast to his own servants only, and called none of the officers to the banquet. Then said he to be Goaz the eunuch, who had charge over all that he had. Go now, and persuade the Hebrew woman which is with thee, that she come unto us, and eat and drink with us. For lo, it will be a shame for our person, if we shall let such a woman go, not having had her company. For if we draw her not unto us, she will laugh us to scorn. Then went Begoaz from the presence of Holofernes, and came to her, and he said, let not this fair damsel fear to come to my Lord, and to be honoured in his presence, and drink wine, and be merry with us, and be made this day as one of the daughters of the Assyrians, which serve in the house of Nebuchadnezzar. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now, that I should gainsay my Lord? Surely whatsoever pleaseth him I will do speedily, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. So she arose, and decked herself with her apparel, and all her woman's attire. And her maid went, and laid soft skins on the ground for her over against Holofernes, which she had received a big Goaz for her daily use, that she might sit and eat upon them. Now when Judith came in and sat down, Holofernes, his heart was ravished with her, and his mind was moved, and he desired greatly her company, for he waited a time to deceive her, from the day that he had seen her. Then said Holofernes unto her, Drink now, and be merry with us. So Judith said, I will drink now, my lord, because my life is magnified in me this day, more than all the days since I was born. Then she took, and ate, and drank before him what her maid had prepared. And Holofernes took great delight in her, and drank much more wine than he had drunk at any time in one day since he was born. They rendered the first lesson. The Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For me hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For me all from man's fall, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and only is his name, and his mercy is all them that fear him. Throughout all generations, he hath shown strength with his arm, 
He are scattered with the proud in the imagination of their wrongs. He are put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble man meek. He are filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he are sent empty away. He remembering his mercy, had been his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, O man. Here begin at the ninth chapter, the second epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain on this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Macedonia come with me, and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you, and make up beforehand your bounty whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty, and not as covetousness. For this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth for ever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for this exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He ran at the second lesson. The next minute. For now let us have thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon all, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save them that rule, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Hinder thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only Thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. The call to the 19th Sunday after Trinity. O God, for as much as without Thee we are not able to please Thee, Mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quiet to the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Light thy darkness, see beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. A prayer for all conditions of men. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed, in mind, body, or estate. We remember this evening especially all those afflicted by Hurricanes Helene and Milton. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and as promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. So join me in the third verse of hymn 338. There dwell the Lord our King, the Lord our righteousness, triumphant o'er the world and sin, the Prince of Peace. 
on Zion's sacred ice, his kingdom he maintains, and glorious with his saints in light forever.